I recently went to the biggest games convention in the United Kingdom. And it also happened to be my very first big convention and it was a blast. It is called the UK Games Expo and it is a veritable miniatures mecca for those inclined towards miniature madness. I really enjoyed myself. I had a ton of fun and what I realized when I got there was that actually I haven't bought any Games Workshop products this year. Except for maybe some Gene Sealer cults back in January but they don't count. I haven't bought any of the big massive box sets this year. And what that meant is that I ended up spending the money I would have spent on those box sets on way too much stuff at UKGE. And what that meant is that I walked away from UK Games Expo having purchased way too much. So I thought, why not talk about the games that got me excited at UKGE, some of the upcoming games, and look at my massive hobby haul. Because yeah, I am a... I got problems. I have an addictive personality, and let me tell you, there is nothing that makes me feel more like a junkie than miniatures. So let's tuck right in. So let's see, who to start with? Well, why not with the miniatures that have me the most excited this year? I have genuinely fallen in love with this creator's sculpts in a really big bad way. These are Black Scorpion miniatures. I have been eyeing these up for a while. There is a ton of different miniatures there that they do. And I finally used this as an excuse to, to buy them, to basically buy some of the miniatures. So I bought like a variety of different types of miniatures. I bought some fantasy mercenaries. I bought a ton of fantasy mercenaries. There's something about the gritty nature of these sculpts that I really like. And though they're not necessarily true scale. They're not heroic scale either. They're this kind of weird mix. I think they fit in well with Reaper miniatures, if you know those. I just think they look incredible. Each one of these characters is profoundly unheroic, and that's exactly how I like my goons. And that's what these guys will be. They're going to be goons for an upcoming game of Frostgrave, but we'll talk about that maybe some other time. And aside from the fantasy characters, I also bought a ton of cowboys as well. I don't know why, I got no cowboy games that I'm playing, I've got no cowboy games upcoming, but I just fell in love with these guys. Look at them, there's this guy here, he's like, put the money in the bag! Absolutely adorable, I love these characters, and I even got a free drunken guy as well. So these were all bought loosely, I just picked these up, couldn't resist. I just couldn't resist, guys. If I see a beautiful miniature, I have to have it. So this is Black Scorpion Miniatures. I totally recommend checking them out. I have fallen in love. And next up, it's not necessarily miniatures related, but I couldn't help myself. This is from Cultzilla. I bought a ton of products from them. They are novelty items. So here you can see there's postcards that they do. And they're basically of all different Cthulhu areas. You got the Arkham Asylum, you have the Innsmouth Harbour, things like that. These are genuine. I just use these as handouts in Call of Cthulhu as a TTRPG. I'm actually a big fan of tabletop role-playing games, as you might discover as we continue on through the hobby haul. I also bought these novelty uh, deck of playing cards for Alice in Wonderland. And the reason why I bought these is because Yasiga, an upcoming game from Blackside Studios, it uses a deck of cards as its randomization system. It's called the Chaos deck rather than dice. So I wanted a fun novelty deck and that's what it's gonna be. It's gonna be Alice in Wonderland cards. Ooh. Next up, we have five parsecs from home. This is a miniature war game. It is just a book. I don't think they sell any miniatures for it, but I could be mistaken. Now, the thing that excited me about this was firstly that it's from Modiphius. I actually really like some of the Modiphius games. They they do a miniature war game, uh, Fallout Wasteland Warfare, which is a miniature war game based on the Fallout franchise. I'm actually not a huge fan of the Fallout IP, but the core mechanics of the game really excited me. Fallout Wasteland Warfare is almost entirely designed around being a co-op slash solo game where you go on adventures, you go pick up items, there's like tons of inventory and loot that you're meant to be getting, you can upgrade your characters, there's all sorts of different interesting stats. I've really enjoyed my time with it and that made me pick up Five Parsecs From Home. From what I understand, Five Parsecs From Home seems to be a system built very similarly to Fallout in that it is a co-op slash solo adventure. It seems to be very narrative focused. You basically build up your own kind of gang or war band and then you go solo adventure wargaming. You take them out and you go up against AI and kind of bots, right? And the thing that really excited me about this is that this is designed to randomize encounters. There isn't necessarily a ton of set scenarios in here. You get the tools to build your own, to randomize them, and that just sounded like a ton of fun. 
and that's why I picked it up. Yeah, so I'm really excited to actually see this in action. And then next up, I came across this old number. It is the Bretonnia book. This is for, oh God, what edition of Warhammer Fantasy is this for? I think this might be for fourth edition Warhammer. This is the Bretonian book. And I fell in love with it the moment I saw it. Look at that color. Look at that style. Absolutely fantastic. If Warhammer the Old World doesn't come out with this kind of color scheme again, I gotta be really disappointed. Bretonnia, I'm hoping, are a big part of Warhammer the Old World on its release. So, gotta get reading up. Now, I don't think I'm gonna be building a Bretonian army, and if I do, I'll probably end up using the Perry Miniature Sculpts, honestly, because their knights are pretty good. Or 3D printing a bunch of models, I think. That's kind of the problem with Bretonnia. They were a bunch of knights. Loads of historical manufacturers make knights. What happened to Bretonnia? <laughs> Also, funnily, I do think that the Perry Brothers did mix most of the Bretonian sculpts, but not 100% on that. So I saw this book. It was a real blast from the past. I had to have it. And I did. It was sold at a stand. And next up, we have another miniature wargaming rulebook. This is Open Combat from Second Thunder. This continues in the what is becoming the trend of the last five years of miniature agnostic war games where you can kind of build your own characters. This one, however, it's not as focused on the kind of narrative aspect like maybe Five Parsecs from Home was. This is designed more so to be a skirmish war game, competitive, adversarial, traditional, good old classic. What really stood out to me about this game was that this is ostensibly Blood Bowl the miniature war game, okay? It's not on a pitch, but it uses a very similar mechanic in that most of your attacks have the potential to push your opponent or to deal damage to them on a roll of six. And if you roll a one, if you whiff one of your rolls, then it actually turn passes to your opponent. Play passes to your opponent. So you lose out on the rest of your activations. So a lot of this game is about risk management. It's all about maneuvering with the terrain. You wanna push people into walls because that will deal them damage. It seemed like a ton of fun. I have never gotten into Blood Bowl. I think this honestly will be the game that gets me more into that style of gameplay than Blood Bowl itself. This specifically is pre-Gunpowder though. I was speaking to the creator at Second Thunder and they were saying that they were gonna have a gunpowder supplement at some stage. So maybe that's where my cowboys will come in. And also for open combat, I picked up, they have some bespoke dice. Basically, they're just D6s, but they show you what the, what the actual result does. So you can see on a five, that deals a bit of damage. On a three, that pushes. And that's kind of how the system works. Now, the funny thing about this was, was that I ended up buying two sets of dice and the creator Second Thunder was basically like, oh, you don't, you don't necessarily need two sets. You could get away with one set. How's that for good customer service? Trying to actively dissuade you from buying too much, but alas, discourse cannot be stopped. So that was awesome. I'm really looking forward to trying out that game. And again, we're continuing on the trend. This is Rangers of Shadow Deep. This is from Joe McCullough. If you have watched the channel at all, then you already know about him. He is the indie darling game designer. This is Rangers of Shadow Deep. I think this is one of his bigger games. Ostensibly, you are a ranger. You are gathering up a party and you're venturing into the Shadow Deep to fight against this existential evil. Stop me if you've heard this one before. But what makes this game really exciting is that once again, you get to create your own group and you get to venture in. You build up your own warband. This is is a solo and cooperative tabletop miniatures game. This was created after Frostgrave, so I think this one might have some strengths over Frostgrave. And I did see that in terms of the gameplay itself, it's taking elements from a game called Temple of Madness. So I'm guessing there's a little bit of insanity mechanics. I'm really excited to get tucked into this game. And it, it's just continuing this long tradition. I think Joe McCullough has really popularized it, but then you do have creators like Modiphius of these warband level skirmish games that you're creating your own characters in. They're designed for solo, they're designed for cooperative, and I think these, these honestly, these games that I've mentioned so far would be really at home on any Dungeons and Dragons player's bookshelf. And I think we're beginning to see more people get into the miniature wargaming hobby through these kind of, these transitional games where you're building up a more roleplay heavy group. So I'm looking forward to talking into this and seeing how well it stands up to Five Parsecs from Home, to Frostgrave, and to some of the other games where you build your own war bands. A lot of solo gameplay in my future, which is good because I am forever alone. Next up, we have the Call of Cthulhu. It's not a miniature war game. 
but it is a tabletop role-playing game. It's adjacent. So UK Games Expo is actually more so about board games, but there's a ton of miniatures and there's a ton of tabletop role-playing sellers there. This is Occam's Razor. This is for Call of Cthulhu. It's done by Stygian Fox. Stygian Fox do a lot of modern day Cthulhu scenarios. Typically, Call of Cthulhu is set in the 1920s. These are modern day ones. I really like their stuff and I decided to pick up support them. They're an indie publisher. And what this one is, it's just a set of different scenarios for Call of Cthulhu. Occam's Razor, I think that the theme of this book is that a ton of these are mundane. Some of them are mundane, some of them are not. And so they're all about keeping the investigators on their toes, whether or not they're going to be encountering mythos things. And I think there is a ton of red herrings in this book as well. So I'm excited to deploying this on some investigators when I next get the chance to run a TTRPG which how much time the channel is taken up will probably be never and to also join Occam's Razor is Fierce Sharp Little Needles this again is from Stygian Fox it's just a ton this is like 20 odd scenarios in here for modern day Call of Cthulhu adventures I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into these as well and next up another supplement for Call Cthulhu. This is Down Darker Trails. So rather than being set in the 1920s America, this is set in the Old West. This is set in the Wild West. You get to be a cowboy. Wait a minute, I bought cowboy miniatures. Ha <laughs> ha, now it's all coming together. I've been looking to buy this for the longest time. Going on a trade show, felt like the perfect time to buy in. This is from Chaosium. One of the lovely things I, I think that Chaosium do is that if you buy the physical product, they asked me for my email address. I gave it to them, what appeared in my inbox that evening, the very evening I bought this book it was the pdf of down darker trails so they send you a free pdf with every physical copy games workshop take note imagine if every single code actually bought from games workshop came with a free pdf wouldn't that just be incredible wouldn't that be amazing wouldn't that be just some lovely customer care i'm really looking forward to getting tucked into this i read this on the plane on the way back and it is really exciting and next up what we're going to do is we're going to go from the old west to the far east with Bushido. So this is a miniature war game depicting samurai fighters in this fantastical sort of Asian fusion inspired setting. Uh, a lot of kind of anime elements, but it doesn't indulge in that heavily. It's more kind of historical, but with fantastical elements. Uh, wushu, I think, would be the description of that. I'm not 100% sure, guys. I'm not super into anime. Actually, for that reason, Bushido kind of had a hard time convincing me that it was good. But what happened was is that I played a demo game of it and I fell in love with the core mechanics. This is a very brutal combat miniature game, okay? This is like a small scale skirmish game that is all about positioning, all about getting into fights and scraps with your opponent and overpowering your enemy. There's also an element of bluffing as well. You have to allocate dice towards your attack and allocate dice towards your defense and you both allocate them at the same time. So you might go all in on attack and I might go all in on attack and we will absolutely devastate each other. It is a ton of fun. I had a lot of fun with the demo games. I think that's one of the biggest advantages of these trade shows that you can go out and play a ton of different games. So Bushido, I bought the two player starter set this comes with a ton of kind of neutral miniatures they can basically be used in lots of the different factions the theme of this is two warring families whose children have fallen in love with one another and they're not big fans of that basically Romeo and Juliet the miniature war game big fan I'm really liking that and then I also picked up the prefecture of Ryu these guys are kind of like your traditional samurai faction I'm gonna try out these guys first however I was more interested, I think, in the Silverman Syndicate, which is the criminal kind of organization. I do want to try those guys out. I was just warned that the starter set for them wasn't great for a beginner. So I'm going to get used to the game first, and then I might try out the Silverman Syndicate. So I'm really excited to try out Bushido. It is a smaller miniature war game. Not a lot of people have talked about, but the production values on it are pretty good. The miniatures themselves look really pretty. They're very beautiful. They're very different. And yeah, I'm looking forward to playing it. I think the thing that really stood out to me was the fact that this is such a brutal combat game. And to go with Bushido, I picked up some bad Squiddo Games miniatures. I picked up the Tomo Gozen with Bodyguards and Lady Ikika, Ik, 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 the Vipers. I picked up the Vipers, okay? These are some Asian miniatures as well. I really like bad Squiddo Games. I know that Midwinter Minis is a huge fan of them as well. They do a ton, a huge variety of miniatures and they are a little indie company, so they definitely deserve your support. And I thought that these would work really well with Bushido. And then next up was a free miniature. So spoiler warning, I was given a free miniature. Spoiler, that's not, that's not a spoiler about that. But I was given this miniature for free. This is for War on Terra. 
This is for a new upcoming miniature war game. I believe it's coming out on Kickstarter this year. One Terra, it is a skir no, it is a skirmish slash army level miniature war game. And the reason why they say that is because they don't have to find squads. So imagine kind of like 40K, you've got squads of units. Well, in War on Terra, you can basically take people out of squads, you can build squads in the moment on the battlefield at that time. Characters can be moved individually or they can be moved as a group and you get advantages for doing either one. There's no predefined squad size. It's very interesting. They had a really, really impressive battlefield. The mechanics I see, I've seen so far seem pretty solid. Good luck to them, they're going to be competing against Warhammer 40k, uh, but they're big fans of Command and Conquer. They also watch the channel as well, so they're going to get a little bit of extra platform in here i'm looking forward to seeing what they come out with looking forward to seeing what their business model is and yeah i watched this one with interest this uh is from the human faction this is a tesla marine it is a prototype model and it looks like they were doing some really imaginative factions i saw that there was one game mechanic where you could teleport your opponent's models and that sounds like a lot of fun to me and then i also bought some paints as well yes i went through airport security with paints in my bag i felt like a very illicit person it was very dangerous but i went for it these are turbo dork these are very exciting so you might have heard of these before they are what are known as two-tone paints basically they change color depending on the light so you can see that there is a nice gradient of shade i've got bubblegum crisis blue raspberry and laser face because the names of these things are incredible and i really want to point these out because well one i think that one day games workshop citadel paints will come out and they'll say we've just invented a new way of painting models two tones uh-uh they were here first just like contrasts were here before contrasts right secondly uh, i i'm really liking these i think it's really cool especially for sort of either crazy fantastical characters or like kind of simulating the northern lights or for sci-fi contexts where you've got really interesting color design i think these fit very well for a cyberpunk aesthetic i think those who play infinity might want to check these out so i'm really looking forward to cracking these onto some models i think they're going to work well on some yafsiga models because yafsiga has a very interesting saturated color palette of strange and bizarre colors kind of like the color out of space from hp lovecraft i think this is the way to emulate that effect so i'm gonna play around with these bad boys and then i bought shadow of mog i was kind of talked into this it is a post-apocalyptic britain and alongside that i also picked up these they are uh i can't really show this one because it has a naughty word on it and youtube might not like that uh it these are like kind of oh, damn it oh well <laughs> these are old school a d and d style uh adventures really i guess i have the god with no name and the bastard king of thraxford castle and these were just so evocative i had to pick them up they're really interesting they kind of fold out into these cool little pamphlets and they come with maps on the other side so you've got all sorts of really interesting stuff i'm just a really big sucker for these very tactile sort of experiences and i'm putting this together all wrong so we're just gonna put this to one side and these were created by Paniotis Lines. So good job to them. I really love that old school style. Next up, we have some more miniatures. From TT Combat, we have Carnival. Of course, it is no secret that I've been getting into Carnival recently on the channel. This was an event exclusive at UKGE, although I also believe they sold them on their website at the same time. So it's not like a true exclusive because true exclusives are kind of lame. But these are, there's nothing new in here necessarily, okay? So these are just characters that already exists in the game basically they are the leaders of every single available gang every single faction in the game but a female version a woman version they're the queens of the adriatic so i thought that was really interesting just alternative sculpts for each of their leader models and i decided to pick it up because actually i'm really in love with the patrician the female patrician there with the pistol and i really wanted that model so i thought it was a relatively reasonable price and i picked it up i got talked into it because i am really easy to sell next up we have gunfighters two these are some cowboys cowgirls really these are all female cowgirls there's a gunfighters one which is all guys and what i really love about these is that they are truly high hard plastic should be sold this sprue demonstrates the strength of hard plastic let me show you the sprue what you'll notice about these is that there is a ton of of customization this is what hard plastic is good at customization you want to make incredibly beautiful bespoke sculpts use resin you want to create fun modular easy build models hard plastic 
These are everything that I want on a sprue. There is a ton of different options. I just thought it was really exciting. And again, I'm going through like this old west vibe or something right now. It's kind of weird. I got nothing to play these with. And these are from Great Escape Games. They're 10 different cowgirls inside the box. And the price was getting good. It was only 15 pound, which I thought was a really nice price for 10 models. And next up, we have one of the funnest things, most dangerous things at UK Games Expo. We gotta talk about this for a second. So this is Atlantis Miniatures. They do some pretty interesting miniatures. I bought a bunch of them. I bought, got a werewolf, I got a goblin dude, I got a ton of, I got a Medusa, I got a hero set, I got uh, some forest critters, and I got a dwarf, look at this, he's a little dwarf. <laughs> I love this little guy, uh, he's just great. Little dwarf dude with a bunch of barrels, just awesome. These are Atlantis miniatures. They are pretty interesting. So what happened was I didn't buy these miniatures. I actually played on their wheel of fun. They sold a spin on a wheel for two pounds. You basically spun a big wheel and you got whatever the, the arrow landed on. And I ended up spinning the wheel quite a few times because I have that type of personality where I do open the loot box, which is why I don't play modern video games anymore. Now, this wasn't, I don't think this is quite similar to a loot box. It was a single event. There was a limited number of models you could get off the wheel and it was for advertising really. It was really great for getting people in on the stand. And I had a ton of fun and I, I ended up saving a ton of money because all of these models were worth at least seven pounds. So I got them for two pounds. So it was great value, absolutely awesome. Recommend them. The models seem good. I'm probably gonna use them in Frostgrave or like Rangers of Shadow Deep or something. Speaking of getting random miniatures, I also bought these. These were just in little kind of candy machines. You just got miniatures, but you got a bunch of them. I got some little mushroom dudes. I got some mushroom dudes, they look so good. And I also got a kind of vampiress, witch kind of with daggers. And that was a bit of a pity. I got that character twice and it is a very specific model. So, you know, live by the random chance, die by the random chance, I'm afraid. Give me mushrooms, also give me duplicates. Next up, we have the Warhammer fantasy role-playing game from Cubicle 7. They have taken on the role-playing game and they have decided to basically give it a new breath of life. And I'm all about that. So anyone who watched the channel for a long time knows that I am a huge fan of Warhammer the Old World. The thing is, right, so I bought the starter set and I bought the actual big rule book. And this is a chunker. This is a chunky boy. And again, I think I might have got the PDF for this, though I'm not 100% sure. This is probably one of my favorite role-playing games. If you've never role-played in a game before, you might want to check out if you're a fan of the old world anyway, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. This is basically the second edition of Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, but with some added extras, some little changes here and there, some tweaks, and it is great. It's actually a really good game. I'd really recommend it. The thing about the starter set is that it's very, very pretty. It comes with everything you need. I would recommend probably just buying this, starting off if you just wanted a little dip your toe into role playing. And yeah, I've had a ton of games. I've played this a bunch, but I've only ever played it on PDF. So it's really nice to have the physical copies. They're gonna go up on my bookshelf. I never get cracked up because I will never, ever, ever have time to play them. But maybe one day, maybe one day I'll get to play them. If there was a theme of UK Games Expo except for Discourse Gone Wild, it was terrain. There was a ton of terrain solutions presented at UK Games Expo, which is really good because one of my main problems with playing a variety of miniature war games, I don't just play Warhammer, I play a ton of other miniature war games, is terrain. Every single table requires its own unique blend of terrain. You've got fancy games, you've got sci-fi games, you've got historical games, you've got alternative historical games, you've got superhero games that are set in modern day cities. There is a ton of different terrain requirements for those types of games. And what that means is that there are people out there now trying to present solutions. And one of those solutions that was presented to me was battle systems. Now this is a big chunky box. I bought the fantasy battlefield for fantasy. And I also picked up the Outlands core set. This will work really well for games like any of the Mantic sort of firefight or even for Lunar. If I were to put this on a Lunar uh, map, then it would work perfectly for that as well. And how these work, these are basically, so inside this box, I've gotten a neoprene mat, but alongside that, I have also got a bunch of 
essentially kind of cardstock, but on that cardstock is printed images. So I don't need to paint them. I don't need to really do a lot of work with them. They're basically ready to go outside of the box and I just build them. So they're modular. So you don't have to build like a specific battlefield. You can see here, the fancy battlefield, it comes with like a tar and it comes with like walls, it comes with all sorts of goodies. It also comes with a little, little neoprene mat on each of them. And it also comes with a kind of uh, a floor, like a path, like a little road. And I'm really excited to get these out. These are perfect basically for anybody who doesn't want to have shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves and shelves of terrain. So I got got, I bought these, I bought both of these, and then they were carried about all day, much to my commiseration, because these are very, very heavy. And that is mostly everything that I bought. I bought this novelty deck of cards for uh, basically no good reason, just because I liked hat. Um, but it looks really beautiful. It was from Cultzilla as well. Now, I did see a ton of other games there as well. I played some Conquest, The Last Argument of Kings. That was a really fun game. I did really enjoy my time with that. My only problem with that game is that it felt like the entrance point was kind of a little bit expensive. They seem to be following the Games Workshop model where they have a very strong IP, very interesting models, but as a result, they're commanding a higher price point. And I just couldn't afford, I couldn't afford to buy into a system like that right now. I just don't have the time, I don't have the money. Aside from that, I also wanted to get demo games in with Mythos and Wild West Exodus. I never got the opportunity to do so though because Arbiter Ian basically ate up my entire Sunday. We ended up hanging out, having a lot of fun. Uh, it was a real blast to see him. Uh, and unfortunately, I just didn't get to demo some of the games that I wanted to demo. I also got to meet uh, Midwinter Minis as well, which was a lot of fun. Really wish I could learn that guy's name. It was really cool to see the guys from On Tabletop, the Restless Kaiser as well. I got to meet him in person. And of course, I played Blackjack with Blackjack Legacy as well. And actually doubled my money because I knew when to quit. And I just had a, a blast meeting everybody there. Um, so everybody who I got a chance to speak to, thank you very much for your time. It was a lot of fun. I plan on probably going again next year, to be honest, because I, I really did have a lot of fun. And whenever I call it the miniatures mecca, I really do mean that. There was a miniature as far as the eye could see. There was lots of really interesting and new game system. I learned about loads of new game system. So overall, it was really awesome. I would really recommend it, guys. Um, and I'm probably going to go again next year. Also, I learned a very valuable lesson. Have good shoes at a convention. Otherwise, you might have to end up buying some very tacky trainers that look like toothpaste and then get judged for throughout the entire event. So yeah, I had a lot of fun. And if you enjoyed this more casual experience of just hanging out with Discourse beside the old fireplace, why not check out my video where I went through the Games Workshop secret survey last month. Or hit me up on Twitch where I'm starting to stream a little bit more. You can find me there at Discourse Games is my name on Twitch. Check me out over there and we'll hang out in the live action. And as always, a huge thanks to my patrons, especially Stephen Jackson, Earthwormy, and Sonic Bread, and to all my patrons who help support the channel and make sure that I can actually afford to buy miniature war games so that I can then play them and report back to you guys whether or not they are or are not good and are whether or not they are worth your money. I will probably have some videos out in some of these miniature games in the future, so stay tuned for that. And I shall catch y'all next time. Subscribe to the channel. Bye bye now I have to clear this up before my mom gets home and kills me. Video is cursed. It's the third time trying to record this thing.